getting snowballed. <laughs> now I've decided to check the uh, valve clearances. Of course, the rocker cover only comes off. Well, not really rockers actually. Yeah, rocker covers. Cover only comes off on the right hand side. So I've got to get rid of the right fairing now. Consequences, consequences. All right, that's the fairing lowered enough to give me access to the head out the right hand side. Uh, yeah, I might have to have a better, better position for them. Some light taps of the mallet. Let's just loosen the seal all around. A bit more. Yeah, here we go. Right. I'm going to be careful with this seal. It's half on, half off, plus a bit of sealant. So I'll go around that with a screwdriver. Okay, I got some oil out of here, dripping down. Now I was on the side stand when I was loosening off that head, but I have to say I wasn't expecting any oil to come out. It won't be much, but it's made a mess. Right, I'm clear. I can take this valve cover off now. I can take this valve cover off now. He says with confidence, but he can't. This cabling's in the way, so I'm going to break these cable ties and move the clutch cable and the wiring loom out of the way to get a bit more lift on the valve cover. So, whoever did the last valve check did a great job of sealing it, I have to say, but they sealed the entire thing, so there was a lot of uh, old sealant to get off. I'm, I'm torn... I'm torn whether these need changing or not. I've got a feeling a valve cover head is going to cost me a few quid. And I don't think these are horrendous. They're probably not at their best, but they're not horrendous. But there is a lot of sealant. What I have done though, I've given myself a fair task in that there's a lot of sealant left on the uh, engine side. So I'm going to have to be very careful getting that out and see they've put it here as well. See, I don't think you needed to. Uh, it, 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 you've gone a bit over the top with it. There's no pressure on this sealant really. Uh, but look, at least it's getting me to the position of checking my valves. Yeah, I've got most of the sealant off now. A uh, little bit painstaking, just trying to make sure it doesn't drop in the engine. There's no point in giving myself more grief. It's just... Just coming off of my fingers. A little bit long-winded. It's got to be done. I'm trying to avoid dropping it inside the engine. Blocking up some oil way which wouldn't be great fun would it still more to go i'd just like to say to the last person who took this and sealed it you went a bit overboard with the rocker cover silicon like because it's all on this inner edge there's a lot of crap Front run, yeah, I've got 99% of it off. With a couple of bits on the inside lips and I'm done. Yeah. Right, I've managed to extricate the fairing. Jesus, it's amazing how modular these things are. It looks a bit sprinty with just that top there. Uh, oil cooler's not in great shape. But I have a second hand spare. But I'm not going to change it because, uh, look, it's not very warm climate in Ireland. Uh, it's probably survive without an oil cooler, really. Uh, I can't check the valve clearances properly here until I get these spark plugs out, which I haven't got a narrow enough tool, so I'll have to pick one of those up. So once I get my inlet rubbers 
either side of the carbs, I'll get the airbox back on. Uh, then once I have the spark plug tool, I can get on to check in the valve clearances. Okay, plug tool in from Triumph. I went mad and bought the Allen key as well. And I've got the uh, valve shim removal tool as well. Uh, it's not that expensive from Triumph. I'll put the pricing up. So, time to check out these valve clearances. Well, get the spark plugs out first, then check out the valve clearances. Let's see how it goes. So, one slim spark plug valve and a 12 mil Allen key which if I really dug deep enough in my toolkit I probably had one somewhere but what the hell now I can get all four spark plugs out now so I can rotate this engine a bit easier let's just see that's a yeah that's a nice fit and yeah there's a little rubber bit in the top there and what I've done is I've used a syringe to try and take out as much of the leftover oil that was left in this valve head oh god that spark plug I barely touched that and it started coming out um, which is I, I don't mind that actually um, to try and find any last traces of this uh, sealant that the previous person used. What I'll do after I've done the valves, I'll give it 500 miles to flush the stuff through. Those plugs don't look too bad. Light grey. Not sure on the gap on it, but I have a plug measuring tool. I can check that out. These plugs aren't horrendous. I've seen worse. I'm mainly on my old two-stroke bikes. Oh, a T500. These are the plugs used to come out of messing that. Jeez, these plugs aren't very tight here at all. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It actually makes a change. Still, having this Triumph tool does make it very easy because it's exactly the right length. And for the price of it, for the faffing around, it's perfect. It's great, you can still get it new. So anyway. We'll soldier on and get these plugs out. Then I can spin the rear wheel. Another good plug. Light grey, dry. Yeah, this is easy to get to all four, it's lovely. Yep, that started easy. Let's see, can I get that up right? That's a bit better. Like this. Yeah, I haven't got too much room, but you only have to get them a turn before you can start doing it with your hands. He says, yep, yeah, here we are. Funny, I thought I got all of the oil out of this. And the more I look now, the more I realise I haven't. But enough, enough. Okay, plug for number two. Yep, yeah, good neck. And number one, the last one. Little bit darker than the rest, but nothing to be worried about. That's grand. 
So that's the four plugs out. I have a plug tool for measuring the gap and four new plugs. But I obviously won't put those back in until I've finished doing the valve clearances. All right, that number one cam on the inlet side, nearly there. So I want the lobe of the cam opposite where the shim is, so completely opposite. So I can check number one, inlet valves on either side. <coughs> so let's do those now. So I've done myself up a little table. My inlet spec is 0.1 to 0.15. So the first thing is a quick test on the inlet side is just to see, look, am I less than 0.1? Because if I am, I don't bother need to. I don't need to bother mucking around uh, too much more. I'll know that's out. Um, so can I get a 0.1 in? And fuck, I can't. Oops, excuse my language. Which means, uh, bollocks, it means that's closed up. That's disappointing. That's disappointing. So, that means I have to shim. My first valve I've tried, I have to shim inlet on cylinder one. So now I know it's under spec. Yeah, not a hope. Now I know it's under spec. I've got to find out where it is. And then I have to get the shim out and measure that before I can work out what the next shim is I need to do. So let's take a wild gamble and go 0.6. Oh shit. Yeah. 0 0.06 isn't going in either. This is looking a bit... T t oh no, that was 0.15. Stupid man. Got to check that these things aren't... Actually, yeah. Got to really check that I haven't got any of these blades stuck together. And I am reading off the... metric or... Imperial connections. Uh, connections. Readings. So, wait a minute now, wait a minute. No, oh, sugar. Yeah, no. It's definitely closed in. So that's my 0 0.1 mil. 0 0.1 mil. Inlet number one is too closed in. So now I need to go down and try and find out where it is. And this is just a bit of a laborious process of suck it and see. Keep going down in size. Half the time it's just trying to select. Okay, here's a 0 0.08. Let's see, and there's a 0 0.09 next to it. Let's see. Is it any of these? I can't get a 0 0.08 in there. Very interesting. Considering of the mileage that's in this thing and when a particular dealer said they did the valve checks I d yeah I can't believe that I can't believe they actually did them look I can't even get right I can't even get 0 0.05 in there so I'm going to call out that last dealer who did the valve checks and say, you lying bastards. Now, it was a long time ago. This bike's been laid up, so. Well, so I can't get 0 0.06 in. Tell me I can get 0 0.05 in. Right, 0 0.05, just. Yeah, 0 0.05 goes in. Let's try 0 0.06 again. Measure, measure, measure. Mm. 
I can just just get 0 0.06 in but it's a bit tight so I'll note that on my sheet so number one inlet first valve Not. I'd be handy if I had a pen that worked So I bought Triumph's shim, uh, shim removal tool. So before I'd actually measured the clearances, but it looks like I was justified. Right, let's have a look at this one the other side. Now, that went in easy. So let's go back to my minimum 0.1 of a mil. Because uh, half the time I'm doing this is getting the right bloody size. Yeah, actually, I won't bother singing on crap. Uh, here we are, point one. That's not going in. That was easy not going in. So, I know my two inlet valves are number one too small so I was gonna say that's not good news but it is good news because I've taken the time to check it out try and get a few of these more used ones together in these right let's try and let's see is it like the other one let's try 0.5 uh, 0.5 easy went in 0.6 easy went in, so it's not as bad as the other one. So let's try 0 0.08. 0 0.08 is going in. A bit firm. I'm thinking 0 0.09 might not quite make it. No, it didn't. No, I can do a firm push on 0 0.09 and that won't. So that's 0 0.08. So that's uh, that out of spec but you know what I'll do is I'll measure all these I'll go through every one and write down the values and then I'll start fresh again as if I've not done any and take them again just to make sure I'm consistent So a bit more spinning the wheel and measuring the clearances. I'll let you know how I get on at the end. There's no point in filming doing every one. They're all accessible. They're all easy to get to. So it won't be a problem. I'm just going to show you one of my exhaust valves. So number two cylinder here. The exhaust valve is off cam. And hooray. A 0.15 goes in there, so I know my gap is not smaller than 0.15, so that's good. Now my maximum is 0.2 on the exhaust, so I kind of don't want this to go through really. If this goes through, I have too much of a gap. And it doesn't go through, so that bodes well for number two exhaust on this side so I know I can just leave that and move on but what I will do is I'll find out for sure exactly what it is just for reference so let's have a look 0.18 let's see 0.18 doesn't go in so it might be 16.17 well it has to be 16.17 uh, it looks like I'm going to have to make this one up. Well, it's 8 and 6 is 14. Oh, no, I know, I know 15. Okay, this could be boring while I find another one of these. Right, I found the magic combination. It's 0.17, so it's within spec, 
Now this motor's got 30,000 miles on it. Uh, so it's easy, it's easy going to reach the next valve service interval because it is in spec. There's no point in doing that exhaust if I'm in spec. Um, it'll probably do a couple of valve services really. And on the other side, it's a little bit bigger. We need to make sure it's not a 20 then that's out of spec. Yeah, have an 18 handy. Let's try that. Uh, 18's going in. So we don't want a 20 to go in. We don't want a 20 to go in. And <laughs> lovely, 20s going in far, far too easy, far too easy. So this is showing me that, uh, yeah, I've got some problems with valve clearance here. So I'm going to have to be ruthlessly methodical and go through all 16 valves very carefully, record all the values and then start the whole thing over again and do it again for consistency. So that'll make an extremely long and boring video, so I'm gonna turn the camera off now. So, top tip. These uh, feeler blades, it takes ages going around trying to find the right size and everything. So what you can do is just unscrew them and take out the ones you know you're never going to use. So there's some really oversized ones here. So these are all out there. Just saves me is another five or six that I don't have to go through. Now, second top tip. <laughs> this little knurl here is to tighten them up. So once you've, you loosen it, choose the blade you want, and then tighten it up, keep the others from falling all over the place, and then use your feeler. Now, this little screw here on the back isn't captive. And with me using it so much, this null knob, null knob came off and landed in the uh, valve head. Now that's fine, you know, uh, usually, but this is plastic and the little screw in the bottom of it is brass. So no magnet was going to pick that up. Now luckily when it dropped, it just dropped handily where I was using it. But if that had dropped down the plug hole, <laughs> so, so look, this is a cheaper, but I can't even remember where I bought it. Uh, but maybe try and get one with a proper, you know, something a bit more substantial on there. Anyway, maybe from Snap-on or something. So, I'm halfway through. I won't tell you the results yet. So I'm just going to move my back wheel. I'm in sixth gear. Just going to move my back wheel to get uh, cylinder four lined up. So, it's quite easy to do. don't have to do it in one sweeping moment, movement I should say. I'm lucky I have a centre stand on this from a, a trophy. Uh, right, that's looking like the exhaust on number four, which is where I want to be. Let's make sure those cam lobes are opposite. Yeah, one more. Perfect, now I can continue that on. So I'm lined up for number four exhaust. Two lobes here, opposite the shins, buckets. So, quick test, use my point two, which is my maximum. That doesn't go in, which is great. That's good news. So my gap isn't over the maximum. Now I'll take my minimum, 0.15, let's just select that now, and I want this to go in, ooh, which it doesn't, so I'm under spec, 
this exhaust is too tight. I don't know where that is yet. So now I'll uh, try a few other blades and find out exactly where that is. Right, that leaves me with my number four inlet. So just need to get that cam around a little bit more. That's the ticket. So point 0.1 to point 0.15. So I'll take my point 0.15 and I don't particularly want that to fit. It doesn't on either lobe. So I know my gap isn't too big. Now I'll take my point 0.1 and I don't really want that to fit either. So let's see. It does. Sorry, when I say I didn't want it to fit, I, I, I do, of course. Um, it doesn't fit this one, so this lobe is closed in. But it fits here, so this is probably a 12 or 13. So let's have a look. Yeah, so just about a nice fit. So I'm at 0 0.13 on that inlet there. So that's okay. Yeah. The other one's too closed in. Let's try 0 0.09. So just in. 0 0.09 and 0 0.13. One good, one bad. Right. So, I've jotted down my valve check values. This is the first pass. Uh, my camera's upside down, it didn't work out. Uh, so it looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valves out of spec. Number one exhaust, just a tiny bit too tight. Number two exhaust, well, this is one of the lobes that is. One of them is 0.22 and it should be 0.2, so a little bit loose. Number three is good on the exhaust, both lobes, both cams. Number four, the first cam's okay. The last cam is 0.13, so a little bit tight. On the inlet side, I've got five valves to do, actually. Yeah, five. Uh, number one, way too tight, 0 0.06 and 0 0.08. It's not good. Number two is okay. Number three, one of them is less than 0 0.05, and I haven't got a feeler gauge that goes lower than that. 0 0.05 won't even go in, so I need to find some feeler gauges with a finer uh, gauge. Uh, the other low one, number three inlet, is 0 0.07, so that's well under my minimum of 0.1. So I've got to do something there. Number four, 0 0.09. So it's just off, so I need to do something there. And the other lobe on number four is 0.13, so... Bit of a mixed bag, really. So I'm glad I did it now. But that's the first measurement. Now, on any of those, I could have made a mistake. I could have got two feeler gauges stuck together or anything like that. So I'm gonna go through the whole process again and map those out again and make sure there's no discrepancies. So I'll just do the whole thing again. It'll only take me 20 minutes now. Because it's just taken me forever to do it the first time. Right, this exhaust here, number one exhaust, two lobes here. I had down as 0.17, this one, and 0.14, this one. Let's see if I can get that the same. Right, I don't want 0.20 to fit. And either, it doesn't, great. So I know I'm not over. I want 0.15 to fit, it does. Lovely. Now, very tight fit on the right hand side. I had that as 0.14. Uh, yeah, it's 0.14. Yeah, 0.15 struggling to get in there. You can just get in. 
can just get in but it's a bit tight I think we'll leave that at 0.14 and do that shim so 15 okay it's going in well so it's bigger than 15 but less than 20 so that bodes well let's have a look how we can make up something now let's try an 18 should fit because I said it was 17 right the 18 doesn't fit so it's going to be 17 so let's see if we can make up 17 I uh, need to find blades that add up to 17 right, 9 and an 8 17, lovely now I had that down as 17 last time but it's a bit tight it's a bit tight in fact I can't get it in so it's I knew 15 fitted 17's a bit tight, I'd really have to force it in. So it's going to be 0.16. So I'm going to change that to 0.16. So that's not too bad. That, they kind of tally. They're, they're a slight bit out, but they kind of tally. Just to confirm, I've got 0.16 here. Yep, yeah, 0.16 goes in. It's a nice, it's a nice fit. So between 0.16 and 0.17, because I can get in 0.17, just uh, I'm going to err on the side of 0.17. So I'm good on that. I'm kind of happy with number one exhaust. I just go through and do all the other uh, all the other valve clearances now, and see if there's any wildly out with uh, my first pass. So that's my second valve check done and it's caught me out which that was the idea so that's great number one exhaust fine they checked out number two exhaust marginal difference but either way they're in spec so it wouldn't make any difference number three exhaust fine number four exhaust fine big one was inlet on number one I originally had 0 0.06 and 0 0.08 and I remeasured and I had 0 0.11 and 0 0.13 bringing them both in spec it's obvious what I've done there. I've left a 0 0.05 mil feeler gauge in hidden amongst the two I was using. So uh, they're within spec. So it just goes to show, check, check again. Number two, grand. Number three, uh, one of them still wildly smaller than the smallest feeler gauge I have. So I need to find some more feeler gauges with a smaller thingy. Uh, number three checked out. Um, marginal difference on number 10 so I've actually got one two three now what have I got one two three four five six that's six valves and I might possibly do one or two others I don't know yet but at least six valves to do uh, but I need to check out number three first before I start ordering any shims. But of course, before I do that, I've got to. Once I've decided exactly which valves I'm doing, geez, the new valves are coming head off. Once I've decided exactly what valves I'm doing, then I need to use my Triumph tool because I don't want to take the camshafts out and remove the shims and measure the shims so for that i'll need a horseshoe caliper not a vernier so i'll pick one up on ebay so it'll be a while until i do the next video taking them out these videos are crap aren't they yeah this geezer he can't get his fucking camera lined up at all is that me you're talking to Ha, ha, ha.